let's go over some simple single strategies you can use to dominate your opponents. Now this video is courtesy of Let's Play Tennis on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to their awesome channel. I've put their link in the description below. All right, let's watch this point and then we'll diagram it. Here we have Taylor Fritz, this is Christian Guerin, and even though it's a practice point, there's so much to learn. Let's just understand from the return of serve aspect. Look how Taylor moves forward with a hop. So he's split stepping forward, he's getting his weight going forward. You want that, you wanna kind of fight fire with fire. You wanna be aggressive and attack the return. You can also notice where he hits this ball. He's returning back <laughs> to the center. I always tell people that they should aim for the center third, not to the outer third. You'll be so much more consistent when you hit the ball to the center. It reduces their angle. You won't hemorrhage, you know, points and just miss wildly on the return. So it's a great place to return. Be a, an aggressive returner who aims to the middle. Now, when it comes to rallying, you want to think of directionals. If you know what directionals are, simply put, it just means that when the ball crosses your body's line, you hit it cross court. Let me explain. If there was a straight line through Taylor from the net all the way to the back fence, if the ball as it's traveling to you cuts through that line, then you return back cross court. So let's watch. Here comes the ball and it cuts through that line. If there was a straight line from Taylor, through Taylor from the net, to the back fence, the ball would cross right there. So since the ball crossed through that line, he's going to return back cross court. Too many players, they hit down the line. Even in the pros, they hit down the line when they shouldn't and they get in trouble. So let's see it again. Here's that straight line going through Taylor from the net back to the back fence. The ball is going to go through that green line, through the line of his body. So he returns it back cross court again. Now, this ball, this is a little different. Let's take that same line from the net to the back fence. You'll notice that this ball does not cut through that line, but it's actually staying on the same side of the line the whole time. When the ball does not cut through, that is when you can change direction. You can change direction knowing that you're going to have leverage with that ball and you can absolutely crush it. So watch. He steps into this, crushes it into the open court, and then you'll see him move forward because his partner was in trouble. Now, one last thing. I always get people in the comments section being like, don't use a closed stance. And again, I'll keep saying this. You better tell Taylor Fritz that the closed stance is wrong. This is a lower ball. Typically, when you have a lower ball, and I'll just say a ball that is below like hip level, that is often when you'll see the pros, both on their forehand and backhand, use a closed stance. It's easier to hit a lower ball with a closed stance. He pounds this ball. There's the contact. We can see his non-hitting hand visible over the non-hitting shoulder. Just showing you these are all the things we talk about. You can see him pivot on his front foot. Yesterday, I made a video about pivoting on the correct foot. When the ball's low and out in front of you, you pivot on your front foot to get your hips to rotate. And then again, he gets his opponent in trouble and he moves forward. Now, if you love strategy as much as I do, then you need to pick up a copy of the Singles Playbook by Fuzzy Yellow Balls. Over 50 pages of strategy after strategy to help you beat your toughest opponents. Each strategy comes with a QR code. Just hold your phone or tablet up over the QR code and up pops a video automatically of Will Hamilton from Fuzzy Yellow Balls teaching you exactly how to use that tactic. This that we're about to talk about is actually called the Swiss Watch. It's found on page 20. The reason he calls that is because Roger Federer uses this all the time. To pick up your copy, just use my link in the description. I'm also going to pin it in the first comment. Now, if you're looking for people in your local area to play matches against or practice with, maybe you need tougher opponents to, maybe you're kind of beating up on all the people you typically play against, or if you're looking for a coach who's close to you who can help you with your game, then use my link in the description and pinned in the first comment for Play Your Court, and it's playyourcourt.com slash two minute tennis. When you use my link to sign up, you get 50% off. So first, we saw Fritz 
moving forward into the return. So let's say based on the speed of the serve, let's say in your next match, you're comfortable making contact around the baseline. Well, if you're comfortable contacting at the baseline, then start a step or two back. And then as they go into their service motion, start moving forward and split step and feeling like you're fighting fire with fire, that you're not getting pushed back, but that you're being aggressive on the return. And when you return, feel aggressive with your body movement, but pinpoint where you want that return. And I would tell you to aim for the center third. Rather than letting your return accidentally go wide, pin the ball deep and down the very center. Sometimes with your opponent, they'll fall into the court on their serve, so you can pin the ball at their feet and actually force a short ball or an error. So pre-movement forward and return down the center of the court, you will break serve so often. All right, the next idea. This is gonna help you know when to change direction. Let's say, just like Fritz, you kept getting a ball out here. Well, if we draw a straight line through your body, this line, and I'm gonna make that a little longer, this line tells us if you should hit the ball cross court or if it's okay to go down the line. If your opponent hits a ball cross court and it crosses through right there, it crosses through that line, then I'll tell you to go back cross court again. But if the ball comes toward your inside shot, inside meaning toward the inside of the court, this was to the outside of the court. If it does not cross this line, and now it's an inside shot, you can go back cross court if you want, but now you have the leverage. Now it's smart to then change direction and blast it, because you'll have the power behind it, rather than the backhand, and you're having to guide it and push it up the line, and it's a greater angle and change of, of direction. And, and, and it's kind of scary to go down the line in that situation because you can often miss. But if the ball is on the inside, now you can absolutely blast this ball into the open court. And we saw that Taylor moved in when his hitting partner was in trouble. When you're returning serve, start a little farther back than you think you should and get pre-movement going forward and aim down the center to be a lot more consistent. And if you're not sure if you should hit down the line or cross court when you're in a rally, just think, did the ball cross through the line of my body? If so, hit back cross court. But if it doesn't, then you can change direction. You follow these strategies, there's no doubt. You're gonna gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.